Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to my talk. Uh, I'm going to be talking to you today about open tracing, uh, specifically how the open tracing API is useful for instrumentation beyond tracing. Uh, so first of all, uh, why should you care about tracing at all? What is it, and what problem is it trying to solve? Uh, the problem is, if you're running an application that is a single process running on a single computer, we have a lot of great monitoring tools uh, in that situation. But as you start to break your application up into multiple processes running on multiple computers, you start to fragment the information collection you're doing. It becomes increasingly difficult to tell a coherent story about what your complete system is doing because you start to progressively do more manual stitching together of information coming from lots of different places. Uh, so that's what tracing is for. It's an API uh, for automatically doing all of the causality and all of the stitching uh, that you would need uh, to be able to look at your instrumentation and see what's actually happening across your system as opposed to just what's happening in isolated components. Um, so that sounds pretty amazing. Uh, why aren't we already doing this, right? Like the research on tracing goes back to the 70s. Um, there isn't a lot of new research, really, because as a research subject, it's pretty much done. Um, and microservices, well, that's a new like buzzword. We've been doing service architecture since you know dinosaurs ruled the internet over dial-up. So none of this is new. So why aren't we doing it? Uh, the problem has mostly been a problem of the API. Uh, the degree to which they were tracing APIs, they were um, tied to a specific implementation. You built a tracing system, you built an API for that. That meant if I use that, I'm locked into that tracer. Um, uh, if there were tracers, uh, they tended to be language specific. So there would be a tracer for the Java runtime, maybe a tracer for the Ruby runtime. But there was no way to get these uh, talking to each other very easily. Um, and then the third problem, which uh, you'll see later in this talk, is a lot of the things you want to trace, a lot of the information is in um, libraries, frameworks, open source components um, that are shared amongst many applications. And so uh, those libraries really have a problem because uh, they have to pick a winner, right? They could trace, but they would have to pick what kind of tracing you were going to do. Uh, this is the same problem with logging, right? You want to log, you have to pick a logging format, a logging framework, and that might not be the one that the application running your code is going to use. So this is where open tracing comes in. Um, open tracing is a standard and open API. And what I mean by open is not just open source, but it's not tied to a specific tracing implementation. Uh, a number of uh, uh, experts in the field who had already built uh, previous tracing systems got together uh, and developed an API knowing how their systems work to ensure that it would work across multiple systems. Um, and then we've recently standardized that API under the auspices of the CNCF. Um, open tracing is useful for a wide variety of instrumentation. Uh, it's not just for uh, latency and causality. Uh, as you'll see, metrics, logging, lots of other things uh, can be used uh, underneath this API. Uh, it separates out choosing what you instrument from choosing what you collect. I'm sure people have been in this situation where you're asking the question, what is going on? And then you say, turn on the debug logs. And then you say, turn off the debug logs. And so you really want to separate these two things. You want to have uh, instrumentation just be the semantics of your application, not really worrying about the overhead so much. Uh, and then when you collect, you want to have a lot of choice about dynamically scoping what you're collecting. Maybe you want a lot of information about a certain component and very little about the rest of your system. And it's very hard to do that if you have to go back into your code and literally change all of the instrumentation points in order to affect that. Um, and uh, again, uh, this is great for open source libraries and frameworks because they don't have to pick uh, what collection mechanism you're using. Uh, open tracing is relatively new. Uh, it's a year old this month. 
um, and got standardized just last August. Um, there's already a bunch of movement, though. A bunch of very interesting companies are already using it in production. Um, there's a number of very interesting uh, monitoring and tracing solutions starting to hit the market. Uh, Zipkin from Twitter has been out for a while. Uh, Uber will be releasing Jaeger, hopefully, in about a month. Uh, Hocular from Red Hat is another open source solution. There's also AppDash, Lightstep, which is where I work, um, and uh, a number of other things uh, starting to show up. So it's becoming a fairly rich environment, even though it's relatively young. So real quick, so we're all on the same page, this is basically the extent of the API from a conceptual standpoint. So the basic idea when you're tracing a system is you have spans. And spans are just operations. So a span might be an HTTP request. Uh, it might be a database call. Um, it's, it might be just a, a made up concept that ties together a bunch of things for you. But all it really is, as far as the system is concerned, is a name, uh, a tag set of key value pairs, a start time, and a duration. And from that, you can start linking these things together. So a span can spawn child spans as you link your operations together. And off of the spans, you can start logging. So this is just structured data that you're recording onto the span. When you want to connect systems up over uh, a network, you can serialize the span into what's called a span context and send it as metadata on your RPC call. That span context contains baggage, which is, again, key value pairs that you're propagating in band. So this is things like user IDs, request IDs, uh, information generated from one component that you might want to use later down your stack. Um, and then the final piece of the API is the tracer API. And this is the part where you actually uh, plug in your implementation. So you can write tracers that um, output to Zipkin, Lightstep, um, but also, uh, as we'll see later in this talk, uh, metric solutions such as Prometheus. So what can you use it for? Well, logging is a good example, right? If you start implementing your code with open tracing, it's going to look weird, right? You're going to say, start a span, now log some information on that span, now log that information again, now also output a metric, you're going to have like a stack of instrumentation code like five times the size of the actual code. Uh, and a lot of it will start to look repeated if you start doing this. Um, so after a bit, you might want to consider removing your logging and having your logger just pull the information coming out of the tracer. Uh, metrics and alerting also is very useful because all the information coming out of a tracing uh, API is structured data. It's very easy to uh, create metrics for this. Um, context propagation, that's baggage, uh, the degree to which you are already trying to propagate IDs and other things. This is a great mechanism for doing that. Um, and then the traditional uh, tracing tools, so critical path analysis is really trying to figure out where exactly the latency is in your system. So as your request winds its way through your system, you want to know uh, what was actually eating up all of the time. Um, and the other way to look at your system is more like a topology analysis, which is my request would have been fast, except it was stuck in a queue behind some other slow request. And so it wasn't anything my request was doing, but the fact that it was sharing a resource, like a mutex or a queue, um, with another request or other things happening concurrently in your system. And those things were interacting with each other. Uh, there are tracing tools that can help dig into those kinds of problems. And so you get all these different ways of instrumenting your system out of this one API, um, which you can kind of see here. So this is the sort of Venn diagram of what it covers. Uh, you'll notice, by the way, there are some things that are not covered by the Open Tracing API necessarily. I'm sure there you can find edge cases where you would want to do something differently. Uh, but in general, it's, it's a fairly good solution. Um, this leads me to turnkey tracing. Turnkey tracing is the fact that if you look at hooking your system up, most of the components you want to hook up to link all of your components together, they're your servers, your HTTP server, your gRPC server, 
They're your frameworks, right? Whether it's a web framework like Django or Rails or runtime uh, asynchronous framework, for example, like Gevent, um, or the Java, basic Java, runnable, callable kind of stuff. And then you've got your outbound network calls in your service clients. So gRPC clients, you know, uh, database clients, AWS clients. Those are the things that you need uh, to instrument with open tracing in order to propagate these spans across the network. What's interesting about that is those are also the components in your system that you tend not to write. Those are the off-the-shelf components that you're getting from the open source community. And those are the components we're attacking with things like plug-in and native open tracing integration. So you hit this very interesting thing now. Now that we can instrument those libraries, if you want to come and instrument your application, rather than going in and writing a bunch of um, logging and instrumentation code directly into your system, you can install plugins for these key components and instantly get your system connected up into a tracer. And most of the important information is already there. And then from that really high baseline, start drilling down and then adding application-specific information. Um, but you can really get up to speed very quickly the degree to which the library ecosystem uh, is growing to include the libraries that you're using. Um, likewise, getting information out of your load balancers, proxies, other components in your system that are more things that you are installing and running rather than writing, Nginx, hot proxy, stuff like that. Uh, open tracing is a good solution for pumping information out of those systems. Okay, so let's get into some specific examples. So this talk, we're gonna focus on uh, Prometheus integration and showing how you can pump metrics out of open tracing uh, into Prometheus. So we're gonna do a quick demo of this. So this is my new startup. It's called Dronuts. It's drone-based donut delivery, right? This is the next big thing. It's gonna be amazing. Uh, we don't have the drones yet. That will be in the next funding cycle. Um, but we do have a web app. So, and uh, unfortunately, this is just running on localhost, so we can't all play along. Um, but if you are interested in this app, uh, we are doing a walkthrough at the Open Tracing Salon tomorrow. So show up for that if you'd like to dig into what's going on. Uh, but basically, I'm going to click on some donuts. I'm going to order the donuts. There appears to be some things happening. I'm waiting. Why are these donuts taking so long? I thought it was supposed to be fast. And then I get an alert because we don't have drones. So what's cool about Dronuts is it's instrumented with open tracing and is currently piping out to two different systems. So it's piping out to Lightstep, which is a tracer, and it's piping out to Prometheus, which is a metric system. So if we pop into Lightstep, we can see what one of these requests looks like. So here, let me boop, boop, boop. So we can see the Dronuts client has an operation called buy donuts. Um, it took about six and a half seconds to buy these donuts. And we can see if we pop it open, what's going on there was it made an order request to the API followed by two status requests. So we can see it ordered the donuts and then sat there and pulled the server until the donuts were ready. And that's how this wacky app works. If you drill into the order span, you can see that the API server is calling uh, this kitchen component over gRPC, and it's first calling the add method, and then it's calling the check method. And it seems like, for some reason, the check method is taking way longer than the add method. If we dig into that, we don't have any more detail in the kitchen, but we can see that's where all the time is going. And if we pop open this span, we can see gRPC has automatically logged all of the request information onto it, some structured data. So you can start using this information uh, to figure out what's actually going on in this system. Um, now, naturally, if you wanted to dig into what was going on in the kitchen, perhaps you'd want to add uh, more granular spans into that service. Uh, but you have to come to the workshop to do that. At the same time, we're pumping this information into Prometheus. Um, these graphs look a little silly because it's just me standing up here. Um, but 
uh, have faith that they're interesting graphs. Here, let's show this. So this first one, this is um, all of the operations in the system, but uh, with their timing divided out by a quantile. So we have the 50%, 90%, and 99% uh, uh, latency distributions for all the different things that are going on in our system. And then you can also just see a request count going on. Uh, this one line that's climbing up and up is actually Prometheus measuring its own metrics collection endpoint, which is kind of amusing. Uh, and so that's basically it, right? You can see like one set of tracing, you're getting multiple things out of it. And just to be clear, um, you don't need to necessarily read all of this or no go, but this is basically all of the code that I wrote to connect uh, Prometheus up uh, to this tracing system. So every time a span comes in, it logs the latency, and then if there is an error tag on the span, it increments the error count. So we're getting errors and latency information. And you can see there really isn't a lot of code. It's not hard to integrate uh, these uh, metric systems with the Open Tracing API. And Wow, I blew through that pretty quick. Uh, this gets to the part where uh, I ask everyone to join us. Oh, and we've got a question. Sure. Question yeah, anytime. Go for it. Is there a, like, a multi tracer that farms out to multiple ones? Yes. So, one thing we are looking for people to write are open tracing multiplexers for the various <laughs> languages. Um, so, that is, <laughs> yeah. If you're interested in that, I'm interested in talking to you. Um, Sorry, what? You've got one. You've got one. Excellent. Really like else to yes. Um, so if you are building things for open tracing, get a hold of us. Uh, there is the open tracing GitHub repo. We're also on Gitter. There's a very active uh, Gitter community. Uh, lots of people there who can answer questions. And there is also open tracing contrib, which is where we are collecting all of the various open tracing projects. Uh, we'll also hopefully eventually make you know a database or some system for seeing all the open tracing enabled things beyond just what's in contrib. But if you'd like a pl somewhere to put something, uh, open tracing contrib is where you can put it, and you can still continue to maintain it from there. And the workshop, maybe? Yeah, yeah, and uh, come to the workshop uh, as well. Uh, I'll get to that slide in a second. Um, but the other things we're really interested at this point in the sort of life cycle of open tracing is instrumenting the ecosystem. Now that the API is really starting to gel up, uh, we're trying as quickly as possible to either add native instrumentation to all the networking and service clients out there, as well as the frameworks, basically everything uh, in that turnkey tracing slide. Uh, and if we can't get them uh, to natively add open tracing, to look t for ways to add plugins uh, and you know, uh, various other hooks, whatever these uh, frameworks provide, to get your uh, open tracing added that way. Uh, so that's very much an active uh, world. So uh, if you have your favorite libraries and you don't see that they have open tracing support yet, uh, consider adding that. It can be a fun way to learn about open tracing as well. Um, we're also, of course, interested in instrumenting larger systems such as Kubernetes. Um, OpenShift, things like that. Uh, Prometheus, we're actually just talking to the Fluent D guys. They are interested in this. So uh, there's a lot of movement there. Uh, and finally, uh, we have a, a distributed tracing salon tomorrow. Uh, it starts at 2 p.m. Uh, I'll be doing uh, an open tracing walkthrough in Go. Uh, you can actually uh, follow along uh, in your own language, if you like, uh, but we've got an actual app, the Drone Ups app, for, for people who write Go. Uh, we'll also be generally hanging out and talking about tracing, and there'll be a lot of experts there if you have general questions. Uh, so please come to that if that's what you're interested in. And that is basically my talk. And we ran through that pretty quick, so if there are questions, uh, please go for it. So what you've shown for traces, are those uh, static traces in the code? Or static traces in the code. Like they, they are there before you compile? Um, so the way it works is you add the instrumentation ahead of time. 
So the code is fully instrumented. And obviously, you know, if you haven't instrumented something, you do have to go add that um, before it can be output. Okay. But what happens then is at runtime, and you can. And exactly. And so. It's very similar to the Linux traceable. Yes. So why is it different? Uh, because you said the word Linux in yeah. there, right? Yeah. And so. I got Right, so how do I add tracing to my JavaScript client in the browser with Linux trace points, right? It's like, how do you do it? <laughs> so I think the, if you look at the open tracing API, it's, it's based on these things, but generalized in a key way so that it works across platform and um, across different kinds of systems. So I think that's the reason why there's a need for a new API. Yes. Uh, so there's active work going on right now around um, being able to extract information from existing tracing systems. Uh, I believe like uh, perf events has been the first thing that people have added. I think there was actually another talk uh, about that. Uh, but Linux trace points are obviously a key thing. Uh, being able to read log output and generate spans uh, after the fact. This is called you know out of band tracing. That's an open area right now as well. Um, but yeah, definitely, that's what we're looking for. Other question? Sure. <laughs> Anyone? I have a, uh, Keep going. Yeah. Uh, so you've talked a lot about the, uh, the API and the trace points, but then uh, is there work going on for the, uh, the analysis, the visualization? The, uh, so you've shown a few UI screenshots. I mean, on that front, what's happening? So that's what's interesting is that's actually very wide, right? The degree to which you can pump this into existing systems like metrics, right? So all of your typical dashboard stuff you can get out of that. Um, uh, traditional tracers tend to focus on latency, so those kind of like bar graphs showing the latency and where it is in the critical path of your request. Uh, there's a number of systems that supply that. Uh, at Lightstep, we're really focused on root cause analysis. So being able to add uh, SLAs to your code, uh, to your system dynamically, right? And dynamically uh, do a lot of measurement and alerting uh, without having to reboot your system or get in there. So that's you know, kind of where our focus is. And you've also seen, I've seen examples of people being able to get a topological view of their system, like what components are running, what's actually going on, like what's talking to what out of just getting aggregate information out of traces. So that's definitely uh, things I've seen. And I've also seen PProf-like graphs that show um, like uh, queue links and things of that nature to give you a sense of where latency is showing up in your system due to mutexes and bottlenecks. So. There's a bunch of stuff out there, basically. But in, in, in the open trace project at CNCF, is it focusing on API stuff, or do they also have something uh, for like, you know, visualization? So we are focused exclusively in the open tracing project uh, on the API, uh, and are trying to avoid, you know, to a certain degree, tapping some particular thing and saying this is an official implementation, uh, but trying to just you know, link everyone up to all those imp instrumentations as they show up. Yeah. Yeah? You said you are focused on the API, but now that you have different tracers, um, which are supporting different ways to transport tracers into the collector, right? Ah, yes. Is there some effort to come to a common wire protocol or something like that? Ah. This is an interesting question. Yeah, do we standardize the wire protocol? So far, the answer has been an emphatic no. We do not standardize that wire protocol. I do believe what we need as far as a standard protocol is not so much a wire protocol as um, an interchange format. The degree to which it's not necessarily the format you would be using to send over the wire. Perhaps that's optimized for you know, a particular implementation. But the degree to which you know, uh, the DevOps world, the, the standard token of currency is log snippets, right? What's wrong with your system? Well, send me the logs. Like, I would like to be able to send you like tracing in some standard format and have all these things be able to import and export that format. So I think that is useful, and, and hopefully something like that will be coming soon. Yeah. You said span is the key, key thing. 
Yes. Can a span have no duration at all? Um, Yes, so tracers in general have to de deal with what you might call a ragged graph, right? Uh, it's, you might not get an end. Um, you might not get all the spans, right? The degree to which all these spans are coming from different systems, and I get it from point A, and I get it from point C, but point B is having some trouble, so I don't get that. So in general, uh, tracing systems have to deal with the fact that it's going to be sort of ragged. Information is going to trickle in, right? Uh, it's not all going to be there instantaneously. Yeah. Any other questions? Okay, I think that's it. Come find me after the talk.